Beijing is closely watching the war in Ukraine. As half a month has passed, Russian troops haven't been able to capture major Ukrainian cities nor gain full control of the airspace. The international community has issued collective sanctions in response. They have not only hit Russia hard, but also dealt a heavy blow to China's long-held ambition of taking over Taiwan. In early February 2022, the Chinese and Russian regimes entered into an alliance with great fanfare. On February 24th, after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the topic of a possible communist military attack on Taiwan came to the forefront of public attention. On February 19th, just before the Russian invasion, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said Taiwan would be threatened if the West didn't support Ukraine. On March 1st, President Joe Biden sent a senior nonpartisan delegation to Taiwan. It's a clear signal of where the American strategic interests lie. On March 2nd, several U.S. Senators co-sponsored a bill. The Deterring Communist Chinese Aggression Against Taiwan Through Financial Sanctions Act. It aims to deter Communist China from invading Taiwan with financial sanctions. The congressman said if Xi Jinping follows Putin's example, he would face economic isolation and severe financial sanctions. At almost the same time, former U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who visited Taiwan, has taken it even further. While the United States should continue to engage the People's Republic of China as a sovereign government, America's diplomatic recognition of the 23 million freedom-loving Taiwanese people and its legal, democratically elected government can no longer be ignored, avoided, or treated as secondary. It is my view that the United States government should immediately take necessary and long overdue steps to do the right and obvious thing that is to offer the Republic of China Taiwan America's diplomatic recognition as a free and sovereign country. At the beginning of the Ukraine crisis, the CCP appeared to lean toward supporting Russia. However, as sanctions have ramped up, the CCP has become hesitant and ambiguous. Beijing may be studying the American response to Russia to determine its next move. In the meantime, the U.S. is watching Moscow's response to gauge what the CCP would do if similar sanctions and economic embargo were imposed on it. In the case of Taiwan, the CCP has been planning an aggressive war against Taiwan in recent years, but it's now likely to be rethinking its plan. The sanctions against Russia can be grouped into three categories. The most notable is the financial sanctions, which are considered to be at nuclear grade. Some Russian banks have been kicked out of the SWIFT financial system and their assets are frozen including banks like the Central Bank of Russia and the Russian Bank for Foreign Trade. The U.S. Treasury Department has a specially designated Nationals List, or SDN List. It's recognized to be one of the toughest financial sanctions in the world. Those on the list will not only have their assets within the U.S. frozen and be subject to first-level sanctions, but also even individuals and entities outside the U.S. who deal with the SDN entity will be affected and subject to secondary sanctions by the U.S. It could lead to being shut out of the U.S. dollar-dominated international financial system. Under Executive Order Number 14024, Russian entities such as the Central Bank of Russia, the National Wealth Fund of the Russian Federation, the Russian Sovereign Wealth Fund, and six major Russian banks are currently on the SDN list. Secondly, President Joe Biden announced strict technology export restrictions on Russia, preventing it from importing technology products from around the world, ranging from a commercial electronics and computers to chips and aircraft parts, which are made with U.S. technology or equipment. According to the U.S. Department of Commerce announcement, the latest trade sanctions are intended to limit Russia's aggressive military capabilities. Thirdly, and very important, are personal sanctions. On February 25th, the U.S. added Russian President Putin, its foreign minister, and 11 members of the Russian Security Council to the SDN blacklist. On March 3rd, the American and British governments announced the addition of more Russian officials, oligarchs, and their families to the sanctions list. For example, the U.S. added Putin's spokesman to the SDN blacklist. As of February 28th, the European Union has sanctioned 680 Russians in connection with the Ukraine crisis, including Russian President Putin, 
Oil oligarchs, government officials, propagandists, military figures, and bankers. The EU will also restrict the sale of citizenship, known as golden passports, to prevent wealthy individuals linked to the Russian regime from accessing the European financial system. It plans to launch a transatlantic task force to identify and seize the assets of sanctioned individuals and companies around the world. Today, the war in Ukraine puts the spotlight on this problem. Russians are the largest group of third country nationals that have obtained golden passports and golden visas in the EU. Many of them oligarchs with links to Putin's Kremlin. They escape sanctions merely by waving their nice EU passports. It must end. In a similar move on March 2nd, the U.S. Department of Justice announced that it would establish a task force to target top Russian officials and oligarchs and seize the assets of individuals and entities that violate these sanctions. Naturally, these sanctions are very troubling to Beijing. It's necessary to form a balanced, effective, and sustainable European security mechanism through negotiations on the basis of attaching importance to and respecting legitimate security concerns of all countries, blindly imposing sanctions, exerting pressure, and creating division and confrontation will only complicate the situation and lead to a rapid spillover of the negative impact of the crisis and affect more countries. All the sanctions have led to immediate and serious consequences in Russia. If they were imposed on China, they would be even more devastating. Let's look at the financial sanctions first, including the freezing of the central bank's foreign reserve. Among Russia's 630 billion US dollars in foreign reserves, gold and renminbi have a combined share of 35% that helps to absorb the shock of financial sanctions. However, data from the Chinese government shows that as of January 2022, gold accounts for only 3.3% of China's total international reserve of 3.4 trillion US dollars. China's foreign reserves consist of US dollars, Japanese yen, euros, and British pounds, which account for more than 96% of the total assets, most of which are in US dollars. It means that if China's central bank were sanctioned by the West, 96.7% of its international reserves could be frozen, excluding 3.3% of its gold reserves. Not only would the renminbi be devalued, but its funds to maintain and develop its military capabilities would be completely cut. The expulsion from SWIFT is even more devastating for the Chinese economy. According to SWIFT data, the US dollar, euro, British pound, and Japanese yen together account for nearly 90% of global transactions in recent years. Renminbi transactions account for only about 2%. Although China has developed a cross-border renminbi payment system, SIPS, with the intention of reducing its dependence on SWIFT, SIPS still uses SWIFT for the majority of its cross-border settlement operations. If China's banking system is banished from SWIFT, Chinese financial institutions won't be able to make cross-border transactions. The imports and exports of mainland China, which is the world's factory, will be impacted, making it challenging to conduct international trade. Next, let's look at the U.S. technology export controls. According to China Customs data, the top five categories of goods imported by China in 2021 were, respectively, chips, oil and gas, iron ore and its concentrates, grain, and automatic data processing equipment and parts. The above five categories together accounted for 40.5% of China's total imports. Among them, chips alone accounted for 16.4%. The short-term impact of U.S. export controls on Russia may not be particularly large, affecting primarily its military industry to a certain extent. But if the U.S. government were to use the same level of effort to block technology products and sanction the CCP, just cutting off the supply of chips alone could bring the entire Chinese tech industry to a halt. Some people may be thinking, when the CCP took over Taiwan, it would have gained Taiwan's chip industry as compensation. The strength of Taiwan's chip industry lies mainly in foundries, which are inseparable from Western proprietary technologies. 
Moreover, in 2021, the total output value of Taiwan's chip industry was 145.8 billion U.S. dollars, only one-third of the amount of mainland China's chip imports in the same year. In other words, even if Beijing were to take possession of Taiwan's chip industry, it would be difficult to offset the huge cost of trade sanctions from the U.S. What would be most frightening for senior CCP officials should be personal sanctions that target their overseas assets. Currently, on the SDN's list, there are no Chinese financial institutions, but there are 195 entities and 155 individuals located in China, including Hong Kong and Macau. For example, Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam is on the list after the CCP has destroyed Hong Kong's autonomy. As a result, Chinese banks don't dare to issue her bank cards. She has to receive her payroll in the form of cash. Confidential files obtained by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, or ICIJ, in 2014 revealed that nearly 22,000 mainland Chinese and Hong Kong investors, including many close relatives of CCP top leaders, are hiding large amounts of wealth in the Caribbean tax havens. The ICIJ has since released the Panama Papers, Paradise Papers, and Pandora Papers, exposing more information about the wealth hidden overseas by CCP elites. China's wealth is highly concentrated in the hands of a few CCP-associated power and wealth groups. The wealth hidden overseas is astronomical. Although there is no official data available, we can speculate based on some public records. In 2012, the New York Times published a report entitled Princelings in China Use Family Ties to Gain Riches. It used former CCP leader Jiang Zemin and his son as an example to reveal how senior CCP officials and their families use family power to control the country's economic lifeline and carve up the national wealth. Public records show the grandsons of both former CCP leaders Deng Xiaoping and Jiang Zemin are American citizens. In 2011, a survey conducted by CCP's discipline unit that manages party officials found that a total of 1.08 million family members and children of senior CCP officials had emigrated overseas over the past few years, including to Hong Kong and Macau. Accompanying their migration are the gigantic amounts of assets that have been transferred out of China. On February 28th, the Swiss government, which adheres to the principle of neutrality, announced that it was freezing the assets of Russian executives and oligarchs in Switzerland. According to the Bank for International Settlements, Russian clients had 21.4 billion U.S. dollars in deposits in Swiss banks in the third quarter of 2021. The wealth hidden abroad by powerful CCP groups is supposed to be far greater than Russian tycoons. The Swiss bank's move is presumably very shocking and frightening to CCP's top officials. According to the UBS Billionaires Report 2020, the number of Chinese billionaires has increased to 415 out of 2,189 billionaires in the world as of July 2020, holding a total of 1.7 trillion US dollars or 4.1 billion dollars per capita. The 2013 WikiLeaks China Confidential revealed that senior Communist Party officials have about 5,000 accounts in Swiss banks, two-thirds of whom are Communist Party officials ranging from vice premiers, bank governors, and ministers to members of the Central Committee. Forbes 2021 list of the world's billionaires has 698 Chinese billionaires, including Hong Kong and Macau, while Russia has 117 on the list, just one-sixth of China's. If the invasion of Taiwan touches the interests of the entire CCP's power elite, it's fair to say that it will arouse significant resistance within the party. Taiwan, officially known as the Republic of China, or ROC, was officially founded in 1912 in China's Nanjing City. It was the first democratic republic in Asia that was widely recognized internationally. In 1949, when the CCP seized power in mainland China, the ROC central government moved to Taiwan and its main territory was reduced and restricted to the island of Taiwan. Washington ended formal diplomatic relations with Taiwan in 1979 when it recognized the communist regime, the People's Republic of China. The CCP claims Taiwan is part of its territory and has increased its military intimidation of Taiwan over the past two years threatening the use of force to bring Taiwan under its control, and the regional war between Russia and Ukraine, Beijing has tried to distance the Taiwan issue from Ukraine. First, we have to clear that the Taiwan issue is 
Let me first make it clear that the Taiwan question and the Ukraine issue are different in nature and aren't comparable at all. Most fundamentally, Taiwan is an inalienable part of China's territory, and the Taiwan question is entirely China's internal affairs. While the Ukraine issue aroused from contention between the two countries, Russia and Ukraine, some people, while being vocal about the principle of sovereignty on the Ukraine issue, have been undermining China's sovereignty and territorial integrity on the Taiwan question, which is a blatant action of double standards. Some forces in the United States, in a bid to hold back China's rejuvenation, have condoned and abetted the growth of separatist forces for Taiwan independence and tried to challenge and hollow out the One China Principle, which has gravely violated the basic norms of international relations and severely undermined the peace and stability across the strait. This would not only push Taiwan into a precarious situation, but also bring unbearable consequences for the U.S. side. But in actuality, the Taiwan issue has become an international matter for quite a while. On April 10, 1979, the U.S. Congress laid the groundwork for Taiwan-U.S. diplomatic relations by announcing the enactment of the Taiwan Relations Act to maintain informal diplomatic relations with the Republic of China, as well as to safeguard Taiwan's security and the commercial interests of both parties. In addition, if Taiwan were invaded by the CCP, the U.S. first island chain would be lost and American territories such as Guam and Hawaii would be under threat, and such threat would even endanger the rest of the U.S. homeland. Moreover, Taiwan's semiconductor industry holds a key position in the global supply chain. The war in Ukraine and its chain reaction has already caused global stock markets to plummet. If Taiwan's semiconductor industry were to be affected by the war, it could conceivably have a huge impact on the global economy. And if the CCP were to move against Taiwan, not only would the stock market plummet, but an even greater economic disaster would occur. In terms of a strategic location, Japan's transportation of oil and natural gas has to pass through the waters near Taiwan. That is to say, that Taiwan shares a common lifeline with its neighboring countries. The inspiration that the Ukrainian people have shown to the world in their fierce resistance to the Russian invasion is that only by demonstrating the will to defend themselves will they gain more support from the international community reaching beyond merely moral support. In a speech on March 2nd, Taiwan president said Taiwan and the rest of the world are moved by the determination of Ukrainians battling the invasion from Russia. On March 2nd, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of China opened a special account to raise funds for Ukrainian refugees. And by March 7th, the accumulated amount had reached about 10.5 million US dollars in just five days. The first payment will be given to the special unit designated by the Polish government for the relief of Ukrainian refugees. Despite of great adversity, the government and people of Ukraine have been fighting with tremendous courage and determination. Let me say this from the bottom of my heart. You have been an inspiration to the Taiwanese people in facing threat and coercion from authoritarian power. And at this moment, many Taiwanese people would say, as I do now, I'm Ukrainian. I hope that our Ukrainian friends can continue to persevere and I believe that their courage this time has inspired many Taiwanese and stunned the international community. The military expansion of Russia can definitely not be allowed. I trust that the whole world, the citizens and governments of democratic countries throughout the world stand together with Ukraine. So I hope that they can continue to show support together and also Taiwan will stand together with them. The rare coalition of the West to impose such tough sanctions on Russia may well have exceeded the expectations of the CCP. To Beijing, who has a dream of invading Taiwan, this should come as a major blow. It's probably the first time that the CCP has seen in clear view that its allies are much stronger than it had previously imagined.